Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be making kunk fritters, y'all. This is such a delicacy in the Caribbean here in South Florida. So kunk, if you're not familiar, is basically a seashell and it can be made into fritters. We have kunk salad, we have cracked kunk, which is basically fried kunk like you fried chicken. But yes, today we are making kunk fritters. Y'all, the flavor in this recipe is absolutely insane it's super easy and this is something that you know my family and other families and other people um from around the caribbean enjoy so let's get into it so we're going to start off with a green bell pepper orange bell pepper red bell pepper a scotch bonnet pepper um this is optional depending on if you like heat or not yellow bell pepper a sweet onion and what we're gonna do is go in and you want to cut um, all your veggies down to a nice size. Now they don't have to be micro diced, um, but you do want to make sure that they are cut just a little bit fine because you don't want people biting into a fritter and all of their tasting, you know, they're crunching. It's supposed to kind of blend and you know harmonize together in your mouth when you bite into everything so you don't want the vegetable the crunchiness of the veg vegetable to overpower um the kunk itself and then the rest of the fritter so you're just gonna cut all of your vegetables down into nice little sizes and then i have a little um stainless steel bowl off to the side and then we're just gonna throw everything in there as we are cutting it down Adding all three colors of bell peppers is also optional too. I feel like they offer different flavors, so I just added them all. Cause you know, on this channel, we very extra when it comes to flavor. So the onion, um, you also wanna, I, you know, kind of cut that down a little bit. So for the same reason, so that you're not biting into a huge chunk of anything when um, biting into these kunk fritters. So with the scotch bonnet pepper, this is where we gotta be a little sensitive because some people can't take the heat and they got to get up at my kitchen. So the seeds inside of the scotch bonnet pepper is what um, aids to the heat. So I only used seeds from half of the pepper and then you definitely wanna cut these down very small because you don't want to set um, people's mouth on fire. I try not to make it as hot but you know, we like spicy. If you don't, I would say leave the scotch bonnet out and you can add cayenne seasoning um, to it as well. So this is kunk. I had my um, local market go ahead and tenderize it. They run it through the tenderizing machine. So that's why it looks like it's like, you know, shredded. But this is basically a whole piece of kunk. And I have um, quite a bit of kunk here. And then, so when you're cutting it for your kunk fritter, that orange part there or gray or whatever color it is you want to make sure that you cut that off for whatever reason um that part is literally equivalent to rubber it's very look i'm pulling it trying to rip it and it does not move and that is not something that you want in anybody's food okay so you're gonna go ahead and cut that off and then when you get your conk tenderized if your market um does offer this option um it makes it super easy to just cut and boom it's it's you know you want to low-key like shred it do not use a shredder don't be lazy use a knife but yeah so i'm gonna just keep cutting making sure that i don't have any rub rubbery pieces um that's gonna be added to my comforter so i'm just gonna keep um slicing 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 and the key to making good comforters is that you want more kunk than you have vegetables. So I was preparing for a large get together. My family is huge. So that's why um, this recipe is kind of, you know, big in size, but I'll drop down in the description box enough, you know, just if you want to make it for two to three or maybe four people. So once you cut up your vegetables and your kunk, you kind of want to blend it together and you want to make sure that you have more meat than you do vegetable because that's the point of a kunk for you don't want your vegetables to outweigh um your kunk because that defeats the purchase we're not having you know vegetable fritters <laughs> it's kunk fritters so first we're going to start out with our flour and then all the ingredients used will be in the description box below don't worry i got y'all 
Then we're gonna add dried thyme, onion powder, garlic powder. We know we like garlic, okay? Garlic make everything taste better. Um, dried oregano, um, chicken bouillon packets. And in this recipe, I used two. Depending on the amount of comfort that you're making, that may vary as well. So please proceed with caution. And then I have some fresh cracked black pepper. If you don't have cracked pepper, you can use regular pepper. It's your prerogative. And then um, Badia Complete Seasoning. Again, baking powder. All ingredients and measurements will be listed in the description box below. I added tomato sauce and then I'm going to use the can. I filled it up with water, which was eight ounces. And then I um, tossed the water in there as well. So you're going to take a whisk. I ain't gonna lie, I started using a whisk at first and then my arm started hurting. So we gonna go ahead and transfer over to a spatula. Um, you can use a whisk or a spatula to um, mix all of your, your ingredients and make sure everything is well incorporated. Of course, you want to make sure your seasonings are you know distributed equally. You don't wanna bite into too much of nothing. So the trick to this recipe is that there is no set amount of flour that you will need. You are going to have to eyeball and make sure that your batter is thick because when you go to drop it in the grease, that flour is going to bind everything together. So I just stir, stir, and then I kind of eyeball and like, eh, might need a little bit more flour. So now what I did forget when cutting up my vegetables is fresh cilantro and tomato also go in this recipe so it is never too late to add anything that you forgot as you see so we're just going to chop up both now the key with tomatoes and i think why a lot of people don't like tomatoes is that stuff that i'm cutting out like that flesh uh mush on the inside of tomatoes it's a huge turnoff and i get it um i'm not a huge fan of tomatoes see that yeah no we don't want that in our comforters so i gut it all of my um plum tomatoes out and then i literally just use the the flesh the the outside flesh and then i went ahead and diced that and make sure when you're selecting your tomatoes that it's nice and firm so that it does not you know turn into mush in somebody's mouth because they go talk about you in somebody group chat so boom we went ahead and added it and as you can see it's not too late it didn't alter the recipe or anything and then you want to fold that into but you know make sure you add this when you're cutting your vegetables and it'll just save you some time so as i was saying um here and then even after filming this consistency was a little bit too loose for me so i did go ahead and add a little bit more flour um what will happen once you drop it if you don't have enough flour to bind in your recipe once you drop it into the oil it'll separate vegetables go to floating everywhere so yeah so here in my handy dandy cast iron skillet i have um vegetable oil heating up and then you can always do the sprinkle test to see if it's hot enough sprinkle a little flour and if it fizzles boom you're ready to go so i use the ice cream scoop um i for each corn um comforter i only use one scoop but the key is that once you drop it in the grease to kind of press it down and flatten it out like a pancake or like a potato cake um, and you want to just flatten it out so that it cooks evenly and that um, all parts of the comforter is nice and crispy inside and out. So you want to scrape underneath your comforters to make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. This prevents burning, of course. And then you're going to let it fry. So the key to comfort is it's like kind of like cooking pancakes. So when you cook pancakes, you know it's not ready to flip until you start seeing the little bubbles coming through on the other side, little holes coming through, and it's the same thing. So you want to wait until your comforters are nice and golden brown around the rim and it has those holes and then bloop. You're going to go ahead and flip it over. Now, if you're scared of grease, please, um, you know, have somebody accompany you in doing this. And then when you flip it over, you're going to smash it down some more so that the inside is just as crispy as the outside. You don't want doughy comforters on the inside. So the, the rest of them, I had to wait a little bit, as you can see, before I flipped it over. So you just want to bloop, flip it, and then you're going to press down on them um, 
after you have flipped them over and as you can see they're a nice beautiful golden brown um if you are not familiar with conk or if you don't have conk available where you are you can use salmon you can use shrimp or any other protein that you would like to substitute with y'all look how beautiful and then if you find that that one little piece of you know fritter ain't frying like the rest of it just keep rotating it so that it doesn't burn but you're looking for that beautiful golden brown on both sides and you want to make sure your inside is just like that so i have a paper um paper plate with napkin to drain the grease and then when they're done just throw them over to the side now i do take um a napkin and also pat dry the top of it because you don't want to bite into something that's grease filled that's just nasty so don't be afraid to um keep it going as you're cooking your comp fritters um i'm still waiting on the other two to get done but i can start new ones at the same time so you're just gonna plop it in the grease smash down on it and then wait for um it to turn that beautiful golden brown before it's ready or before to, you start flipping it so keep you a plate with um, a napkin on the side. And of course, like you fry anything, you need to drain the grease off of it before serving it. And it is best served while it is piping hot. No, no one um, is fond of cold comforters. So if you're not ready to eat it, I do recommend waiting and you serve this as it comes out of the grease. And then with the batter, you can also freeze it and use it for another occasion. You don't have to use all of it at that time, but this is best served fresh out of the grease. And you can see like all of the spices and flavors just, you know, marrying around in the comforter. Like it just come through. Y'all, this recipe is everything. I know a lot of people from South Florida look forward to having um, comforters. It's low key hard to find like good comforters. So, you know, I got y'all. Y'all can make y'all own comforters. And another thing I want to mention, also notice that there is not much grease in my pan. Um, please don't deep fry these. Comforters don't have to be deep fried. Um, you can shallow fry it. And yeah, that is it, this recipe, as you can see, is super simple. Look how beautiful these conch fritters are. We do not dip them in soft. We eat them just like this. And I'm telling y'all, the flavor profile on the, in this recipe, amazing, hands down. Um, you know, you will inherit this job at every cookout in fish fry if you use this recipe. As I always do, thank you guys for tuning into another video. I will be back soon. Bye.